Greetings all. Last Outrider here with part two of what is the Inquisition. We will continue on with the mission archives from Agent KXK99. Going on to mission DXK12 Alpha. Target. Astropath Adept Krahanka Injax. Injax is an astropath of nigh on a century's experience and leads a quorum of the Hive Sibylus Choir on Scintilla. It is my belief that he has accompanied a number of special circumstance missions in a capacity detrimental to our objectives. Although I have no hard evidence I suspect Injax is working within the extended network of Inquisitor Hulk. I came to this conclusion following investigations into Hulk's ill-conceived purging of the cult Epicurean offshoot on Kinog 17 years ago, wherein Injax evidently played a central role in decoding the cult's unorthodox battle cant. Following that initial mission, Injex soon appeared again, this time accompanying one of Hulk's inner circle cells on a mission to a parole nine. This particular venture appears linked to the workings of the distant Dagma Lupin Bureau of Revision. It is apparent that Injax's talents were to be used on tra to transmit readings of otherwise sealed archives from directly under the noses of the Decalogues. Exactly what data this cell aimed to purloin was never discovered for our own operatives intercepted Hulk's team before the reading could be transmitted. Injax and most of the cell escaped. Though we claimed the scalp of interrogator Anri that day, our excrucators repaying him tenfold for his lies at the seventh denunciation of Lord Gratis. For the next decade or so, Injax appears to have concentrated his efforts on his duties in the Scintilla Choir, attaining senior rank in a short time, despite the fact that my agents never conclusively or directly linked him with Hulk. He did appear to make a number of voyages to our out-sector locations, several of which coincided with sightings of other individuals linked to our enemies. This fact alone was sufficient reason to maintain a close watch upon his movements. The wisdom of, his ac of this action has now proven itself. Three months ago, Injax participated in a special circumstance mission ordered by Inquisitor Hulk, aimed at infiltrating our own network. My operation became aware of the attempt following a remote prognostication reading, and this was confirmed by three separate tarot readings. Forewarned, my agents were able to set a, a trap for Hulk's cell as its members undertook their infiltration. A firefight ensued. In the main terminus of the St. Jaukin facility, in which three of Hulk's senior acolytes, including the Prime, was killed. Though Injax escaped, I now judge the time is right to terminate him, and that none 
would dare raise objection for fear of unmasking their own complicity in previous actions. To that end, I have ordered the activation of Agent KXK-99 to undertake a Level 4 termination mission. Mission Archival Extract Retrieve and Purge Agent KXK-99 to be activated as per Protocol D-33 Exfiltration of Facility 9K via secure route into Archeos primary hub bonded secure transportation my lords I have to report that the termination of Krahanka Injax is accomplished Zankis achieved her mission with minimal complication and at this point it appears that no complications have arisen Zankis infiltrated Hive Sibilis as planned, working her way from the bonded, bonded transport to the periphery of Sibilis Choir by way of the route engrams implanted during activation. This route took her through a circuit of disused ducts, within which she encountered and terminated a number of extra mission enemies. These were largely criminal elements hiding out in the ducks, including several Imperial Guard deserters. The first group, evidently a criminal gang attempting to smuggle narcotics up Hive, was terminated with 100% success. Nine individuals being dispatched within 27 seconds using a variety of blade, blunt trauma, and exsanguination techniques. The second group encountered appeared by their tribal markings and insignia to have been Imperial Guard veterans of the IMCAC suppressions. It was my belief, shared by many among the subcell, that all survivors of those missions had been isolated. But apparently, we are in error. Azankis dispatched this group with relative ease, though she did make recourse in ranged weaponry to ensure the last of the veterans did not escape. This action took almost nine minutes, and so did not put the mission outside of the limit of action. The remainder of the infiltration saw a number of smaller incidents, all of which were safely within mission parameters and merely served to whet the agent's appetite for the termination of her target. Entry into the choir facility was achieved by way of a Kim Waste outflow vent. <clears throat> the vent's alignment did not match the data provided, and although Zankis achieved entry nonetheless, this incident alone could have served to scupper the entire mission. Data source is to be terminated for being either erroneous or compromised. 17 minutes into this phase of the mission, Zankis perceived that she was being tracked. She looped back upon her course and set an ambush, detecting an enemy approaching. Soon, the enemy knew she he was compromised, and Zankis launched her attack. It is not apparent who this foe was. See attached subfile DY slash eight seven three zero three for cerebral tissue sample. 
<clears throat> but she proved well, but he proved well schooled in the assassin's arts. The close confines of the Kim Waste Vint made for a desperate and close fought struggle. But Zankis was able to overcome her foe and turn his blade in his hand and penetrate his left eye socket, retrieving the tissue sample in the process. This action had cost the mission time, however, and the limit of action was now perilously close. In order to reach the target's sanctum within mission parameters, Zankis used a secondary route, one that took her through a network of cloistered access galleries used by the choir's menials. She encountered a number of servitors, but each was a monotasked and did not note or respond to her passing. This phase of the mission passed without incident, and the sanctum was reached three minutes short of the allotted time. Entry to the sanctum was due to be achieved using codes provided by the source, but Zankis decided this method was unreliable in light of the infiltration information related to the duct overflow being inaccurate. She instead used backup implanted subcode overrides. This course of action was risky, but proved wise, as, in so doing, she discovered that the original codes were indeed outdated, and an attempt to use them would have resulted in a level 3 alarm being sounded. Once inside the sanctum, Zankis proceeded with extreme caution to the target location. There, she discovered injects about his absolutions, or ablutions. Despite the inviting nature of the target's disposition, Zankis delayed her attack, sensing something amiss. As she watched from the shadows, the presence of a second tracker, similar to the type encountered in the duct, became known to her. Zankis now knew that her mission was likely to be compromised, but made the decision not to abort. Instead, she remained in her hiding place in the shadows and awaited an opportunity to attack. The opportunity came when the target completed its ablutions and commenced preparations to enter the trance sleep state all his type must undergo in order to cleanse themselves of any taint picked up during the course of their duties in the choir. At that moment, the attacker made to alter his position in during the course oh I'm sorry, in the sanctum, and in so doing turned his back upon Zankis. Knowing that another opportunity might not present itself, Zankis leaped from the shadows, drawing two blades, one in each hand. With her left blade, she inflicted a non-lethal wound to Injax's jugular, causing her target to stagger backwards, unable to call for help, and to attempt to stem the flow of blood with both hands. Simultaneously, she decapitated the tracker with her right-hand blade. As Zankis made to dispatch Injax in the prescribed manner, he was able to launch a desperate, unfocused psychic assault. Zankis was shielded, however, and well-disciplined in resisting such attacks. 
The resulting feedback stunned Zankis but inflicted a fatal etheric cerebral intrusion upon Injax. Though not carried out exactly according to plan, the termination was a clean one. Zankis exfiltrated according to mission template, monitoring the choir's auger net as she did so. Analysis shows that no alarm was raised until well after she had cleared the choir's perimeter. Subsequent quizzes went entirely to plan, and Zankis is once again held in Facility 9K. I submit to the subcell that our agenda has been advanced significantly by the termination of Krahanka Injax, and that we should proceed immediately to the next phase. Signed, The Blade Cuts Both Ways. A.H. <laughs> next, we will go on to the next missions. But I think you can see quite clearly Inquisitors don't like each other very much. Until next time, bye.